Good evening, church family. Happy Wednesday to each and every last one of you. Welcome to Bible study tonight. I'm so glad to see you all here in our virtual Bible study tonight. And I hope and pray that you all have been blessed by our Bible studies that we've been doing with this platform. Once again, I know things are different. I know that many things are opening up. We've opened up our regular Sunday worship, but I, and I, know, I also know that we're doing our Bible study virtually and we're continuing to do this because of course, as you know, first of all, we wanna keep everyone safe. And secondly, we wanna be able to make things more feasible and more convenient for you all because weekly schedules are so busy, they're so crazy. And instead of trying to get you all to come to our sanctuary, we want to take time and come to your sanctuary and to your home. So I want you all to do me a favor. As you're logging on tonight, please make sure that you share this Bible study on your timeline. Please share it on your timeline, not the church's timeline, not the members only timeline, but your timeline. So that way all of your friends and your followers can get in on this word that we're going to share tonight. I hope you have your Bibles. I hope you have your, your pens, your notepads, your whatever it is you use to take notes for Bible study because we're gonna get into this word tonight. But before we do, let's go ahead and let's open up as we always do with a word of prayer. Won't you bow with me for a moment? Father God, we just wanna come to you first of all, just thanking you for this day, God. Thanking you for this Wednesday evening, God, that you have allowed us to come together and share in your word. Father, I thank you for those who are watching us live as well as those who are watching us on the replay. Father, I pray that your blessings will be upon them. God, I pray, oh God, that as they are tuning into this Bible study tonight, God, that something is gonna be said and done that's gonna richly bless their lives. Father, I thank you, God, that the seed of your word tonight is gonna fall on good soil. God, I thank you, oh God, that it's gonna produce an abundant crop. And God, I thank you in advance that you're gonna give increase. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and let all God's people say, amen, amen. Well, church, we are in part two of our Bible study series on faith lessons, faith lessons. And tonight we're still looking at the faith lesson from the fig tree the faith lesson from the fig tree. Our scriptural reference tonight, once again, is coming from the gospel according to St. Mark. Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 24. I want you to go there with me. Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 24. As we deal with this faith lesson at the fig tree, we, of course, dealt with this last week and we're looking at it again this week, but the perspective we're looking at it from this week is going to be a tad bit different than what we looked at on last week. So Mark 11, of course, um, chapter 11, verses 20 through 24. And I'm going to read from the New King James translation. And it says, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe them. And believe, I'm sorry, whatever, let me read that again. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, once again, as we look at this passage of scripture, we see that Jesus is speaking to his disciples after they have passed by the, uh, the withered fig tree that he spoke to back in verse 14 of the same chapter. As a matter of fact, you go back, you can look at it again in verses 13 and 14. And then in verse 21, Peter brings back to his remembrance that previous instance to where Jesus had cursed that fig tree. And many of us are probably wondering, hey, why did Jesus curse the fig tree in the first place? Well, it's very possible that he did it because what he wanted to do was use this as an opportunity to expound on the power of faith, prayer, and forgiveness. And what we see here is that Jesus is using 
this example. He's using this uh, this fig tree to to say to his disciples that he wants to present a lesson to them about faith and how they should have faith in God. And he also goes on, according to uh, verse 23, he always he goes on and talks about how faith can move mountains and how God never intended for us to necessarily be mountain climbers, but he intended for us to be mountain movers. Uh, many of you all know, especially if you've been in the church for any amount, uh, any amount of time, we hear people talking about climbing mountains. Talking about, uh, uh, they even had songs about climbing mountains. Lord, don't move my mountain. Give me the strength to climb. Lord, don't take my take away my stumbling blocks, but lead me all around. With, uh, there's another song that they came out with uh, the Barnes singers, the late Reverend F.C. Barnes, talk, talking about I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. I'm doing my best to make it in. If you go back and you you can YouTube old BET commercials, and they actually had an album that came out back in the 80s called Rough Side of the Mountain. And uh, they were singing a song by I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain and all that. But how many of you all know that God never intended us to be coming up on the rough side of the mountain? Because he never said anything in scripture about climbing mountains. But what he said, what Jesus said here in scripture, he said in verse 23, he says that if you, he says, says, but surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, he didn't say climbing. He said, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea. That means that God intended for us not to be mountain climbers, but he intended for us to be mountain movers. Now, I want to deal with something a little different here because uh, here we're dealing with a few things, a few words that I see here that, that, that stand out to me, especially in verse 24. It talks about uh, uh, speaking and believing and receiving. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. Speaking, believing, and receiving. Now, go with me here because we see, first of all, we look at this matter of speaking. Okay? All right. So we see here that in verse 23, it says, For shall I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Jesus said, Whoever says, when you say, that means you speak. Whenever uh, Jesus says, Whoever says to this mountain, and Oftentimes, when it comes to wanting God to move a mountain on our behalf, something as simple as a verbal confession can begin that process. Something as simple as just speaking a verbal confession, something coming out of your mouth, you speaking something. That means that's a verbal confession. Now, now look at this. Look at this, how Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And I want to go back to verse 14 of the same chapter. We're in Mark chapter 11. So I'm still in the text. Verse 14. In response, Jesus said to it. He's talking about the mountain. He's talking about the, uh, the fig tree, rather. In response, Jesus said to He said to this fig tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So all Jesus did in this situation, he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Jesus just spoke a word. And church, I don't know if we really truly realize how powerful our words really are when it comes to our faith. And sometimes what we're saying is a stumbling block from us receiving our blessing. Oh, let me help you all with something. Sometimes the words that come out of our mouth are the stumbling block that keep us from receiving our blessing. Many times we blame stuff on everything and everybody. We want to blame uh, our, we want to blame our forefathers, our ancestors, our our parents. They 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 never spoke anything positive over me. You know, people all this negativity coming from home, all this negativity coming from the job. People speaking this, that, and other. But have you not? Yet realize sometimes that many times it's your mouth that's blocking your blessing. I, I wish y'all would hear me tonight. Sometimes it's our own confessions that block 
our blessing. It's us always talking down, always talking poor. I'll never be healthy. I'll never have enough money. I'll never have this. I'll never have that. I ain't going to get that job. They, I'm not qualified for that. You keep speaking that you, and you're saying it over and over again. And the more we speak life to these things, the less likely, I mean, the more, most, li most likely what's going to happen is that's what's going to manifest because of what we're saying. Remember, death and life is in the power of your tongue. You have enough power in your tongue. There's enough power in your mouth to speak life into a situation. That's why Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain. Now watch this, watch this, because when you, when you talk about this matter of speaking, all right, I also want to look at it from another perspective. I want to look at it as far as asking. Now, I'm going to do something different. I want to go uh, real quickly over to Matthew chapter 7. I want to look at Matthew chapter 7 real quickly. And in Matthew 7, I want to read verses 7 and 8. And this, these are the words of Jesus. Once again, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Listen to this. Listen to this. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Now, what's happening here, if you look at the Amplified Translation of this, it's saying, ask and keep on asking. Keep uh, seek, keep on seeking, not keep on knocking. So that means there's something going on that's continuous. So you sometimes you can't just speak something one time and just move on. But sometimes we have to keep asking. I'm not saying doing it as though you're just like, not in a nagging way, like when your children keep asking you for something when you go to the store, mama, daddy, I want a toy. Can I get a toy? You tell them no. Come on, I want a toy. Please, I want to, I'm not talking about that, but we're talking about in the faith realm, we're talking about really speaking and saying something and giving life to it, believing that whatever you speak, and remember, even according to scripture, whatever you speak, that's what's going to be made manifest. That's what's going to happen. That's what God is going to bring forth in your life. So that's what, uh, what Jesus is referring to when he's talking about speaking, whoever says to this mountain. But watch this, because Jesus here in, um, here in Mark chapter 11 he goes far beyond just speaking or asking. He takes it another step further. He talks about believing. Believing. Here it is, verse 23. It says, there are, uh, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now let's back up because we're talking about those words, does not doubt in his heart but believes. I can stop right there. Does not doubt in his heart, but believes. Let me help you understand something. Doubt and belief are what you call antonyms. That means that they have totally opposite meanings. I've said this, I don't know if I've said this to our church before, but I've said this in my previous pastor. Faith and doubt cannot live in the same house. <laughs> Did you get that? Somebody type that in the comments. Faith and doubt cannot live in the same house. It's like oil and water. It's like, it's like certain things just can't, it's like light and darkness. They can't live in the same house. For example, if you walk into a dark house where it's so dark, you can't even see your hands. As soon as you turn the light on, what happens is the darkness is canceled out. Light cancels out darkness. You can't be in a room and say, it's light in here and it's dark in here all, all, at, the same, all at the same time. And just like you cannot be in a room where, where light and darkness at the same time, you cannot live a life of faith and doubt at the same time. And that's why Jesus says, does not doubt in his heart. You cannot doubt in your heart. You have to believe. There's no way that we can be believers, but yet we have doubt in our heart. Well, I believe it, but then again, I don't. It's all, I mean, it's one thing. I'm not talking about just honest doubt where you're struggling. I'm talking about where you're trying to be on both sides of the fence, trying to believe and doubt at the same time. No, 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 no. Let me give you an example of something. Let me give you an example. Because uh, even in Mark 9, when, when this father approaches Jesus about healing his son, who had a deaf and dumb spirit, one of the things that Jesus told him, if you go back and study that, Jesus told him 
that all things are possible. Watch this. Not just all things are possible, but all things are possible to him who what? Believes. Believes. There's that word again. Believes. All things are possible to him that believes. But then the father replies to Jesus and said, well, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Now, that sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? This man, here it is. He had faith, but he also had an inner conflict, even though he had faith. But the good thing I like about this man was he was honest about where he stood with his faith. And many of us are just like this man. We're struggling with that honest doubt. But once again, in this situation, you see that Jesus comes in once again and proves himself. And he uh, and he casts the deaf and dumb spirit out of the little boy. But even in, in the midst of that, we see that we have to understand that even when you're struggling with your doubt, listen to me carefully tonight, even uh, when we struggle with our doubt about what God can and will do, we've got to go back and look at Jesus' track record. Oh, yeah. Let me say it again. Even in the moments when we struggle with our belief, when we struggle with unbelief, we have to learn how to go back and look at Jesus' track record. They say three times a charm. Let me try one more time. Even when we struggle with doubt and unbelief, we have to go back and look at Jesus' track record. Jesus has an amazing track record. If you look all through scripture, all through the gospels, you see Jesus' track record. When Jesus was, was, was walking the earth and when he was uh, performing miracles and when he was healing folks and he was casting out deaf and dumb spirit, opening blinded eyes and, and raising the dead, we see all these different things that Jesus was doing. His track record speaks for himself. Jesus didn't have to go and uh, do a whole bunch of, uh, make a whole bunch of cards like uh, you can get your healing right, right here. I can do this. I, yeah, look, look, check this out. Check this out. Jesus didn't have to. Uh, if, if I believe if they had Instagram and all of that, you know, he it probably would have made things even more effective. But it's not that Jesus really needed. He didn't go uh, taking pictures of hey, uh, healing life, deliverance life, hashtag another miracle. Jesus didn't have to do all that because as he went through his ministry, the people who followed him saw what he was doing. And because they saw what he was doing, they witnessed the miracles. They, they witnessed the, all the deliverances that took place. They see that Jesus' track record spoke for himself. So if you know that Jesus has the track record that he has, then guess what? You have something that's very strong that you can stand on knowing that Jesus is going to come through. And that's why he tells, he says, do not doubt, but believe, 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 believe. Now watch this. Not only do we see that uh, Jesus talks about speaking or asking, and not only does he talk about believing, but watch this. Last part of verse 33, he deals with receiving. Okay, let's go back and look at verse 30, 23. Once again, there's a lot of rich stuff in verse 23 right here. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. Watch this last part of the verse. He will have whatever he says. Once you speak to the mountain and believe in your heart that it can be moved, then you will have what you have spoken. Always remember this church, expectancy is the key when it comes to faith. Let me say it again. Expectancy. Somebody, you can type that in the comments too. Expectancy is the key when it comes to faith. Therefore, once I've spoken something, once I have, have put myself uh, in the realm of expectancy, then I need to be ready to receive the outcome. <laughs> y'all, boy, that's a good shout news. I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen tonight. Once, once I know, once I've spoken something in faith, for example, once if I need healing in my body, once I have asked for it, once I have believed it, once I've spoken it, then I need to make sure I put myself in the position to receive that which I've asked for. 
It don't make no sense to ask God to bless you with a job and you don't start going out and looking for some new work clothes. <laughs> Y'all come on and help me teach you tonight. It doesn't make any sense for you to, if you, if, for example, if you're believing God for a house, if you're believing God for a house, you need to go ahead and you, 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 you spoke it, you believe it. Now you need to put yourself in a position to where you can receive it. So that means that, you know what? You need to start thinking about, okay, I'm believing God for this house. You know, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start thinking about if you get a house built, start thinking about what color you want your, your tile to be. Think about what color you want your bathroom to be. What, how, what do you want your cabinets to look like? What do you want the elevation outside to look like? What kind of uh, landscaping are you going to do once you move in? Think about uh, what kind of furniture you're going to put it all. Oh, do I want a fireplace? Uh, do I want, uh, do, do, do you want a wine rack or something? You know, think about all those different things that you want. Why? Because you are putting yourself in the position to expect to receive what you have asked for. Right here, Jesus did not do any gimmicks or games or anything like that. All he did was he spoke to that fig tree in verse 14 of Mark 11. And said that you will never bear fruit again. And again, according to the scripture, the disciples heard them. Then fast forward to toward, uh, towards the uh, next part of this, the, this chapter, rather. You see where Peter has said, uh, well, Peter said to him, said, hey, Rabbi, look, that's that tree you cursed. Look, there it is right there. It's withered away. Why? Because, see, Jesus spoke that tree. He spoke that into existence with, with the tree. And that's how the tree withered away. I'm trying to help us to understand tonight that if we're going to truly exercise faith, we've got to be willing and ready to put ourselves in a position to where we can receive that what we've been, what we've been asking for. Receive, you got to put yourself in position to receive it. Verse 24, watch this, I'm almost done. Verse 24 says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that that word, what that word believe is coming up, ooh, it's coming up. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Y'all get that? He says, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have this, have them. Jesus took this whole fig tree matter to teach this lesson right here. To tell us, to remind us that, okay, so I, we, so I, we, I spoke just like I spoke to that fig tree. If you speak to this mountain and tell it to get out the way, tell it to be moved, be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt it. That means when you speak it, you got to have some belief behind your speak. You can't say, well, mountain be moved. It's probably going to stay here anyway. But I'm just going to, I'm going to try this thing out. Oh, the Holy Spirit just dropped this in my, in my spirit. Okay. Some people are struggling with the matter of tithing. Some of us are struggling with giving. Now, you know what the word of God says in Malachi about how when we bring the tithe, he'll open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing once and we don't have room enough to receive it. But yet, if you say, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm struggling financially right now. So I'm going to try this tithing thing out for a little bit and see what happens. But I'm probably going to still be getting red notices. Probably going to still have to hide my car down in mom and them house. Probably going to still have uh, all these bills that I do. Going to be able to, I barely be able to pay my bills. And, all, and you just, you, you, you continue, you, you tithe them, but you pull them out. I don't care how much you tithe. I don't care if you're tithing 20% instead of 10%. If you do not believe, then whatever it is you're believing God for is not going to come to pass in your life. I know that's tough. I know somebody don't want to hear that, but I'm trying to help us tonight. Whatever it is that if you if you still have that mindset, well, we're going to see what God going to do. I just don't know. Then no, but, if, but yet... When you are when you are operating in faith and you have that spirit of expectancy, go ahead and get ready to see those windows of heaven being opened and see those blessings being poured out so that what you where you don't have room enough to receive. Go ahead and put yourself in a place and expect it. And that's all Jesus wants us to know here tonight. I'm done after I say this. Your words. When it comes to faith, our words, what we speak is extremely important. What we speak and what we believe 
is extremely important because if I'm speaking right and I'm believing like I need to believe, then I now have set myself up to receive. <laughs> Somebody ought to be shouting right there in your living room right now. I, I've had, I'm speaking. I'm speaking to this mountain. I'm speaking to this, this feature. I'm speaking to this debt. I mean, I'm speaking to this illness I'm dealing with. I'm speaking to this, this depression, this spirit. That's on. I'm speaking to it right now. I'm telling it to be gone, telling it to move out of my life. I mean, not only am I speaking to it, but I'm also believing that the more I speak into this situation, that God's going to turn it around. So now that I've spoken it, now that I believe it, now I can receive <laughs> What God has to meet for me on the other side of this thing. And church, that's all I want you to understand tonight about these faith lessons at the fig tree. And, and, if, and I dealt more with the, uh, with the basics of it last week. So um, if you missed that, go back and look at last week's Bible study so you can get the first part. And then that way you'll be all caught up with the faith lessons at the fig tree. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Well, church, I hope and pray that you enjoyed the Bible study tonight. I know I enjoyed it. Man, I'm feeling good tonight. My God. I don't know if it's a little residue left over from Sunday, but I'm just, oh man, I felt like almost a preach coming out in my spirit tonight because of this word, this Bible study lesson about these faith lessons. I want y'all to stick with me. If the Lord says the same, we'll deal with some more faith lessons. I just want y'all just to stay with us. It's, it's going to get, like the old folks say, it's going to get good and good. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you all, if someone would uh, type in, or if it's on the, uh, actually on the description of the uh, of this Bible study, but uh, I want to encourage you all to sow a seed tonight, amen, in our liberal uh, our liberal Wednesday night offering, amen, paradisembc.org, a seed of any amount. Also, if you want to text to give, you can text the number 281-667-4886, you can text to give that way. All right. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we want to we want to sow a seed tonight. Uh, those who might have missed church Sunday for whatever reason and you didn't get a chance to to bring your tithe. Guess what? That's the beautiful thing about virtual. You don't have to try to drop by the, uh, the physical campus. You can just go online and you can uh, bring your tithe and your offering there. If you missed I love my church, you can take care of your I love my church. Whatever it is you think you need to do will be great. Amen. Amen. Uh, looking forward to this coming Sunday morning. We're going to have an awesome time. God has given me a word to share out of Psalm 121. Uh, I'll give y'all a sermon title. It's, I don't know if it's going to be a series or one sermon, but I'm, I'm studying. And if the Lord says the same, we're going to talk from the subject. Can I get some help? From Psalm 121 coming this coming Sunday. Y'all don't want to miss that. It's going to be good. We're going to have an awesome time. We had an awesome time this past Sunday. When I tell you this Pentecost Sunday was just phenomenal. If y'all missed that service, you need to go back and look at that Sunday worship experience. I mean, it was awesome. And even after the message, man, God just moved in our church in a mighty way. Oh my God, the spirit of praise and worship was all over the building. I, oh y'all, if you missed it, I encourage you all to go back and view. It was just awesome, y'all. It was amazing. Uh, amen. Uh, also, uh, the next thing, uh, those of you who are watching tonight, uh, if you desire to be baptized in June, uh, we'll be baptizing on third, I know third Sunday is Father's Day, we'll also be baptizing third Sunday in June. If you desire to be baptized, uh, please, uh, you can put it in the comments and someone will reach out to you. Uh, we'll give you further steps on that um, so we can make sure that we go over some things with you before your baptism. Also, um, if you are a graduate or you have a graduate in your family, whether it's high school or college, uh, we're asking you all to submit a graduation photo to Brother Donald Valerie. Uh, via email. We're going to put all the information on our church page and that way you can go straight there and get it if you need to submit a graduation photo so we can recognize our graduates on the second Sunday in June. Amen. Also want to be in prayer for uh, Sister Glenda Daniel, Brother Tony Davis, Brother Johnny Davis. Uh, their sister uh, LaFay passed away on this uh, past weekend and we want to be in prayer with that family. They're going to have to travel to Detroit for our services, so we want to definitely uh, lift them up in prayer that God will be with them and give them safe travel. Also, want to pray for Sister Justice uh, Hoyle, who is the daughter of Sister Carla Layton. She, I believe, she's still in the hospital. I need, I'm going to get an update on her uh, pretty soon. 
Also want to keep in prayer Sister Audrey Gordon, as well as Sister Sandra Lee and family. Sister uh, Lee uh, recently had a loss in her family as well. So we want to lift these individuals up in prayer. If you need prayer, you can put it in the comments or you can email info at paradisembc.org and we will stand with you in prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and close out our Bible study in a, with a word of prayer. And I want you to bow with me for a moment. Father God, we just thank you once again for this time of sharing. Thank you for this Bible study lesson for from tonight and also last week on the faith lessons from the fig tree. God, help us to understand, God, that, that you have given us so much. Uh, through your son, Jesus Christ, in this lesson, God, that knowing that when we speak to our mountains and we tell them to be thou removed and, and we believe in our heart and don't doubt that we know that we will put ourselves in a position to where we will have whatever we say. God, help us to make sure that we're saying the right things, God, that we're believing the right things because we want to put ourselves in position, oh God, for everything that you have for us. We don't want to be the cause of our own blessings being blocked. So Father, we thank you in advance that you've given us this word to help us to carry through, to carry out rather what it is that you want us to carry out so we can receive the blessings you have for us. Now, oh God, I pray that you would bless us indeed, that you would enlarge our territory, that your hand would be upon us, that you keep us from all evil. God, we pray that you would just grant unto us grace, peace, mercy, and safety as we proceed from this virtual platform to whatever it is that we're getting ready to go to. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and let all God's people say amen. Amen. Relationships, restoration, renewal. Paradise go, paradise go. Paradise Go. May God bless you this Wednesday night and keep you is our prayer.